Hashtag self-care. It's all about face mask selfies and rainbow bath bombs and a picture-perfect latte and journal. The Instagram version of self-care looks really nice on the surface, but it tends to distort what self-care really is. It's distorting what it really means to take care of your health, body, hygiene, relationships, mental well-being, everything that makes up your life. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with wanting to treat yourself to skincare or cute products and share photos of those on the internet, but it's important to stay critical, especially since so many brands are co-opting the hashtag self-care trend to try to sell products. Because is spending money really the best way to take care of yourself? To be frank, the cute and Instagram-worthy version of self-care is not really how self-care works for those who need it the most. This video is not about hashtag self-care, it's about self-care taking care of yourself. It's about making decisions that your future self would thank you for. It's almost like parenting yourself. It's not about instant gratification, but rather making the right choice for your long-term well-being. Self-care is not necessarily what is easy, what is indulgent, and definitely not what is Instagrammable. On one hand, it can mean treating yourself and indulging in something you know you enjoy, but it can also be making tough decisions that you know you'll ultimately be glad you made. So now that we've gone over what self-care is not, let's go over some ideas for practical self-care. And this will be divided into four different categories, mental, physical, spatial, and social. To take care of my mental and emotional health, the one thing I have found the most helpful is just expressing my thoughts in some way, whether that be writing in a journal or talking it out with someone close to me. There are a lot of different methods you can use for journaling. One of the most highly researched and found to be the most effective for increasing your happiness is gratitude journaling. The method I personally like to use the most is just brain dump stream of thought journaling where you just pour out your thoughts onto the paper. Another great tool is meditation. And yes, I know you've heard this everywhere on productivity internet, but that's just because, well, it's pretty helpful. Meditation has been shown to have so many different types of benefits. One that I've been recently looking into a lot is willpower. Of course, I'm not really an expert on meditation, so be sure to Google and find some great resources. There are guided meditations and guides to focusing on your breathing, all kinds of helpful resources on the internet. Of course, for more serious mental health issues, make sure you're seeing your therapist and other general medical practitioners regularly and taking your medications. Some other things that I find really help me feel less stressed is one, to do that one thing that has been weighing on my mind for quite a while. For me, that often means clearing out my email inbox because I'm not really great about checking my emails. So for me, clearing out my email inbox just feels like a weight being lifted off my shoulders because all of those notifications of unread emails are just disappearing. Another thing that can help lift your spirits is to do something that will make you laugh, whether that be going to watch a comedian or watching cat videos on YouTube or hanging out with your friends. And my last tip for mental self-care is to immerse yourself in a good book. I find that reading a good book that I get fully absorbed into, whether that be nonfiction or fiction, just really clears my head of any negative emotions that I am dealing with. The next category is physical self-care. Of course, as students, we are chronically undersleeping, so one great thing to do would be to take a nap or to work on your sleep schedule. Sleeping is so important to your mental and physical health. Like. The benefits cannot be overstated. Another way you can take care of your physical health is to feed your body. Eat a healthy snack when you are hungry and preferably only when you are hungry. Now, I'm not here to lecture you about health food because I'm not really an expert on this topic, but you know what's good for you, so eat that. And lastly, you can improve your physical health by just moving your physical body. In fact, the purpose of exercise is not to make you lose weight, contrary to what we as women and girls have often been fed. It's just to make yourself feel better and be healthier. So don't try to force yourself to do something you don't want to do. The best exercise is something that you will actually enjoy and do. If you feel like you want to stretch and breathe, maybe do some light stretching or yoga. If you want to go experience the outdoors, you can take a walk outside. If you want to get your heart racing, you can take a bike ride or go for a run. There are so many different ways to exercise, from playing games with your friends to just doing yard work really vigorously, so find something that you enjoy. I called this next category spatial because I couldn't really come up with something better, but it's just about making sure your space and your physical hygiene are well maintained. Sometimes after a long period of straight up not having a good time, your physical hygiene and your cleanliness can fall to the wayside. So you can go clean your space take out the trash, make your bed, do your laundry, just whatever mess is happening in your room, tackle one at a time and do whatever you can. It doesn't have to be everything all at once. 
Additionally, make sure you take care of your hygiene. Things like clipping your nails and brushing your teeth and showering. And of course, you can do a face mask and some skincare if you like those. Nothing wrong with doing something that is cute and Instagrammable as long as it is what actually helps you. Two tips I have for feeling more like an alive actual person after a long period of just feeling dead. One is to have plants in my room. Not only do they feel like life is existing in my space, but also it makes me feel like I have something I'm responsible for, something I have to remain functional for, because if I don't take care of it, it's going to die. Something else that also helps me is brightening up my room with lighting, whether that be opening up my windows or turning on these lovely fairy lights that I have or lighting a candle. My last tip would be to declutter your space. If you feel like there's so many things just weighing in around you and suffocating you, you might just have an overabundance of things. You don't have to declutter everything in your house a la Marie Kondo method. You can just focus on whatever is stressing you out the most. For me, that tends to be papers that pile up around my room. Our last category is social self-care. Now, the main thing you can do is set up social interactions with the people that you care the most about and that make you happy to be around. None of those toxic friends or weird political uncles that you don't want to be around. You can set up a video call for those who live far away, or you can plan a coffee date or go ice skating. There are so many different options. You know you and your loved ones best, so pick something you'll enjoy. There's also nothing wrong with low intensity social interaction if that's all you feel that you have the emotional energy for. That includes something like having a text conversation or sending a request to play like Wars with Friends or Word Hunt. Alternatively, if you are introverted like me and you've been around people for kind of a long time, you might want to take some time to yourself to recharge your social interaction battery. Another thing that can be great for your emotional and mental health that is kind of social, question mark, is to invoke a feeling of nostalgia by looking through old yearbooks or other old keepsakes. And my last tip for this video is to declutter your social media feeds. Get rid of those accounts that just make you feel crappy when you look at their posts. If it's a friend or family member and you don't want to completely unfollow them, you can just mute their page on Instagram or unfollow but still remain friends on Facebook. And of course, be sure to follow those brand accounts that make you feel like you want to buy things that you don't actually need or want. Especially if they like to co-opt hashtag self-care to try to convince you that you're doing something good for you. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have other self-care ideas, be sure to leave those in the comments. I upload new videos every Monday, and my Instagram is at studyquill, where I post photos of my notes and bullet journal. See you next time!